that we're going to need four things, right? We're going to need a chart. Now, we're going to need a short-term chart. Now, this chart can be a two-minute or a five-minute. You choose. Um, the two-minute has some advantages, and the five-minute has, has some advantages. So you might have to experiment which time frame works best for you. Now, a lot of people operate on platforms that don't give them the option of having a two-minute, and then the platform makes your choice for you. You have to be a five-minute trader. But if you can do a two-minute, you're going to have to experiment with both two and five minute to determine which time frame operates best for you. What do you feel com more comfortable with? But there is no wrong answer, okay? We're going to put a 20 period moving simple, a 20 simple period moving average overlaid on that chart. We're going to put a 200 period simple moving average overlaid on that chart. And we're going to utilize my position concept, okay? This two minute chart of BABA, as you can see, has a simple 20 period moving average laid over it. That's the blue moving average, as you can see. And then we have the 200 period moving average overlaid on the chart. Now, in my opinion, no short term or into chart. In fact, no chart, whether it's long term or short term, should ever be looked at without these two key moving averages. There are other relevant moving averages, but there's none more relevant than these two. The 20 and the 200 are anchored on every single chart. Make sure you're looking at every single chart through the eyes of these two moving averages. And when you're operating with a moving average system, you always want a buddy system, never a one moving average system. You want a two or more moving average system. I prefer a two moving average system. And in that two moving average buddy type system, you want a short term oriented moving average paired with a longer term moving average. We've got the BABA two-minute chart. We've got the two moving averages laid over it. Now, I want to now talk about my position concept in relationship to three things, okay, for the most part. The 20-period moving average is item number one. The 200-period moving average is item number two. And yesterday's, this is yesterday's data. I'm sorry, this is yesterday's data. I'm sorry, this is yesterday's data. We need to grab yesterday's late day price data. So we don't want to grab yesterday's entire day, but we're going to grab yesterday's late day price data, just this chunk right here. So we've got the three items, right, for the most part. We've got the 200, we've got the 20, and we've got yesterday's late day price data. Now, when we take these three things and lump them together, we come up with sort of like a zone. Now, as you can see here, if the stock opens above this zone, above this zone, the odds immediately flip to going long, buying. If we open instead, right, below this zone, let's do that now, boom, if we open below the zone, the odds would suggest that the better plays are to the downside. So above the zone of the three items, the 200, the 20, all right, and yesterday's late day price zone or range, here's the zone. If the stock opens the next morning, above the odds are higher to continue to the upside. If the next morning the stock opens below this zone, the odds are much higher for an acceleration to the downside. Now, this is one of the key components of becoming a consistent trader getting the probabilities right. What's the, pro this is the $64,000 question in trading, right? What's the probability of the stock going up versus going down? And when you, if you can get the probability right, then it just becomes a numbers game. So if 72% of the time, if we're up above 72% of the time, you get more up. And if you open below the zone, 72% of the time, you get an acceleration to the downside. Now it just becomes a numbers game. And I teach my traders that the numbers game is based on the number 20. Just do 20 trades. After 20 trades with a 72%
uh, probability ratio in your favor, you're going to have much more money on the 20th trade than the money you had when you started on trade number one. So once you get the probability right, once you know your numbers, once you know your statistics, it's just repeat, 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 repeat for 20 times, collect. Repeat, 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 repeat for 20 times, collect. The problem is that most novice traders have no numbers. They have no probability ratios. They have no, and so therefore they can't form a plan because before you form a trading plan, you need to know your numbers. You need to know your probability numbers. And this is something that I teach all of my traders. I teach them the probability numbers for virtually every single event that technically occurs in the markets. Now, okay, so we've got the general concept above the three items, below the three items, the 72% chance of follow through, up above 72% chance of follow through to the downside. Let's continue. Boom. Now, just because we're up, um, we have to now, if, we're, if the stock opens above those three items, the stock, the 20, the 200, the following morning. We have to now rate the up. How far up is it? Is it just marginally up? That's one. That's one. That's level one up, marginally above the three items. Are we far above the three items? That's three. That's position three. Not just up, not up, up, but that's up, 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 okay? And then we have the middle. It's not close to the three items. It's not super far from the three items either. It's sort of snuggled in there between. Now, this is subjective, but this is where knowing your stock comes into play. I teach my traders that you need to trade the same stocks every single day for the vast majority of your lives. This is where you're... you're this is where your edge comes in. No professional skips around. Novices, untrained novices skip around and they're news chasers. No, we don't do that. We get a list of 10 stocks that become our family members and they become so, we become so intimate with the daily activity and the participants that play in these 10 stocks that it's almost as if the stocks sit down next to us and say, listen, Oliver, I just wanna let you know I'm about to rock to the upside. Thank you very much, stock. Let's go. And so this is where knowing your stock comes into play, where you're familiar with the stock and you know that's an excessive gap to the upside. That's position three for this stock. And then, of course, it's very easy to know position one. It's just marginally above the three items. Okay? But it is this third position that really requires that you become familiar with your stock to know what's an excessive gap from a historical basis and what's a not not that what's a gap that's not that excessive from a historical basis okay so we've got the three positions now from position 1 the odds are higher that you run to the upside from position 2 the odds are good but a little bit less that you run to the upside not as good as 1 and if you are in position three, the odds are actually better to drop to the downside. So position one, one has the highest odds of all the gaps. The marginal gaps just above the three items have the greatest odds of running. You start to lose odds the higher the gap, all right? This is still good odds. It's still better odds to the upside than down, but you lose some of the odds, not quite as high as position one. All right, this is position two. And then position three, the odds flip. The excessive gaps way above those three items actually flip it to being a better play to the downside. A counter gap play is better from position three. Very important to understand. I'm teaching you my position concept. This is my position concept. Okay, knowing your odds, where you are, knowing where you are helps you know what your odds are 
which helps you create the proper trading plan around those odds, which then leads to you playing the numbers game, playing the numbers game, getting to 20 trades is what creates consistency on the part of a trader. And that's the flow. Know your position, then you know your odds, then you know what your plan is, short or long, and then play the numbers game. Just do 20 trades every single time the same way, and you should have more capital at the end of the 20th trade than you do on the first trade. If, if not, something's wrong with your analysis on the odds. Okay, now let's continue. We've got the down. What if your stock opens below? Same thing. We've got the same three positions, guys. We've got, check this out, we've got open just below the three items, okay? This is going to have your highest odds of an acceleration to the downside. Now, here's a little bit further down below the three items. The odds are good, but not as good as the first position, all right? And then you have the really deep position below the three items. These, this, the odds here are better to the upside than they are to the downside, okay? Three positions. Position one, close, super odds. Position two, good odds of follow through to the downside. Position three, better odds to go reverse, all right? And that is my position concept. I truly wish I had a lot more time because there are a lot of nuances regarding this concept. And I will tell you that just like real estate, the way you make money in the real estate market is by three ways, location, location, location. The way you become a master trader in this business, three things, position, position, position. It all starts from position. I wish I had more time with you. Okay, but that's my position. That's the basics of my position concept. Okay, let's go. Now, we have to go to a concept of mine that helps traders immensely solve this dilemma regarding gaps. Position helps to solve it greatly, but this locks, this completely solves the, the, the confusion around gaps 100%. We're going to take the gaps that occur and we're going to fill them in. Let me show you how we do that. Now, I want you to see this is a chart of Baba today. No, Baidu today. This is today's chart. This is today's chart. Now, I, this is a two-minute chart. I want you to take a look at um, Baidu's first two-minute bar here. This is the first two-minute bar. Now, look at the position of the first two-minute bar. Now grab your three items, right? You're going to grab the 20 period moving average here. You don't even need the three items, just the two items actually. Grab the 20 period moving average here. Grab the 200 here. Now, the stock is right above those items. That's position one. This is position two. And this is position three which as you can see, the stock starts to tire. But we start the day off in position one. The flow from position one is much more highly likely than the flow from position three. As you can see, flow to the upside halts or stops. Okay, now, what if, check this out, guys. This is really interesting. Check this out. What if the first bar of Baidu wasn't there and the first bar gapped up? Now, look at this. Look at the scenario. This is very important. This is the crux of the whole talk here, guys. You got to get this. Now, let's assume this is the first bar. And yesterday's activity ended here. You're gapping up above yesterday's activity. You're gapping up above the three items, the 20, the 200, and the stock. But you're still 
in position one. You're relatively close. So now, what do you do from this gap? You do one of two things. You play the color game, which is buy above a red bar, buy above a red bar when you get one, okay? Or you play the power game, buy above a power red bar. I mean, buy, I'm sorry, buy above a power green bar, power green bar, buy above it, stop below it. Here's a power green bar, buy above it, stop below it. So you've got two games to play, right? The power game, buy above a power bar, or the color game, buy above a red bar. These are the two primarily games we play. Now, guys, this is more sophisticated than it sounds. I just have this unique way of breaking it down so that a 12-year-old can understand it, okay? So we're buying above big bars, and we're buying above red bars. And these are your entries. Those are your entries. But you've got to do those entries from the right position. Get the position right. Then you enter, then get your protection right. Your protection is under big bars, all right? Always protect yourself under big bars. You get another one, protect yourself under the big bar. Okay, now, let's go. Now that you know the concept, we, what we need to do whenever we get a gap is to fill it in. So take a look at this. If Baba gapped here, in my mind, I would fill it in as if it didn't gap. This eliminates the confusion of what I'm dealing with. Fill in the gap as if the stock didn't gap there. Fill it in as if it traded to the markets open. Fill it in in your mind or take a pen and literally on your chart, fill it in. The pen that I use is called Epic Pen. Download it. It's absolutely free. I use it all the time, every single day in my trading. Epic pen, download it, free pen, draw the gap in, all right, as if it didn't gap. Start from yesterday's closing price and draw it in. And this will give you a clear picture of what you're dealing with. So do this. Let's take a look. This is an old chart of Baba. This is not today. So notice where the open is. Notice that it opens above the moving averages, right? It opens above the stock. It opens above the 20. It opens above the, tw the, two, the, the 200. Here is the zone I was telling you about. And we open here. Now, here's probably one. This is probably one plus, all right? This is probably two in this area. I'm sorry. Shouldn't do that like that. But you get, you get my point. Uh, da, 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 da. How do I do this? Race, 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 race. So this is probably two here. And up here you've got category three. So you're still pretty low here, which means that the odds are good for some flow to the upside. If you opened here, the odds would be better with flow to the downside. All right? Okay, now, but what you need to do in this scenario, some people are confused by this, but if you fill the gap in, your confusion disappears. Look, boom. Now, this means buy above power or buy above the red bar, the next red bar. Buy above power, right? or buy above the next red bar, buy above red bars, buy, here's a red bar, buy above red bars, here's a red bar, buy above red bars. Of course, we take profits away, I covered this in greater detail yesterday, away, away, away from what? Away from your 20 period moving average, away from your 20 period moving average, away from your 20 period moving average. So once you get away, you're taking profits. Buy, once you get away, you're taking profits. Buy, you're buying near, once you get away, you're taking profits. All right? I'm not comfortable with that camera going out on me. It might still be working, but okay. Good, good, good. We're making progress, traders. We're making progress. Now, let's take this, this quick look at when. This is an old chart of when. See the gap up? 
All right, now fill the gap in. Boom, look at the position, position one, position two, position three. We're still not that excessively above, not so excessively above. And boom, the stock runs to the upside. All right, so what are you supposed to do? You buy above a power bar. You get a power bar, you know that the odds are better to the upside, wait for a power, power bar, or get in above a red bar. You're playing two games, the power game or the color game, whichever one comes first. If the power bar comes first, we buy above the power bar. If the red bar comes first, we buy above the red bar. We don't choose, we don't say, I like the power bars better than the color bars, no. We don't say, I like the color bars better than the power. No, we take which, whatever we get. We take what the market gives us, and we protect ourselves. Why? Because every play is not going to work. There's nothing 100% in life, and losing is a very important part of trading. You just have to lose correctly. You can't ever eliminate losing. What you can do is eliminate horrible losing, all right? And I teach my traders how to do that. Now... Now, by the way, guys, I fund my traders, so it is really very important that I teach them well because they have my capital in their hands, and if I don't teach them well enough, they will lose it, and they have no responsibility to pay me back from their losing trades. I take 100% of the losses, so trust me when I tell you I am on them, training them, pouring every single thing I know all 38 years of my trading experience into them every single day of their lives. All right, good. Guys, here excessive gap to the upside. Now, you got to see that this is way above the items. This is not position one. This is not position two. This is super far. Boom, fill that in. Look how ridiculous that bar looks. Look how ridiculous that bar looks compared to the others we did. All right, not as ridiculous. Not as ridiculous, right? But look at this one. This is super ridiculous. So when you fill it in, you see how ridiculous that is. All right? That's not a bar you want to buy above. It's too excessive. The people who own the stock from yesterday or a week ago or a week ago are definitely going to be sellers. Excessive gaps bring in heavy selling because the profits come in an instant. Huge profits come in an instant from those who owned it previously. What would you do if you got an almost $10 gain in a stock that moves about 85 cents on average a day and in one fell swoop you got $10? You're going to want to take profits. Profits are selling pressure, which brings the stock in. Excessive gaps statistically bring in more selling than buying. No matter what. People think good news that it causes excessive of gap will cause the stock to run wrong. Good news is a greater incentive to sell on an excessive gap. It's just the reverse. So what are we going to do? We're going to look to play it on the downside. What are our two games on the downside? We're going to wait for a solid red bar short below that solid red bar, or we're going to wait for a green bar and short below the green bar. One is the power game. The other is the color game. Okay. Boom. There you go. Power red bar, let that first red bar happen, mark off the low, and then you come in here with your missile. Bring it all the way from the left here, all right? An aggressive missile. Uh-oh. Boom! Right there's your entry. There's your stop. Now, something really interesting about this chart. I can talk about this chart for an hour, actually. Gaps tend to become half-filled and pause to reverse. So look at the halfway mark of the gap for the most part. Boom, 50. That's my 50% concept. And look at where the stock started having trouble continuing its move to the downside. Half, the halfway point of gaps is a very, very important zone. I teach my traders a lot regarding this as well. All right. Now, I love this game. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go. Take a, look, take a very quick look at this. What is this? Qualcomm, old chart, but still the concept is the same. We're, we're gapping up. Okay? Look at your items. 
All right, it's not excessive. Excessive would be up here. All right, this is still kind of one area. So what are we doing? I want to show. This is really interesting. You see? Do you see this? Do you see the half way mark? Look at the. This is where it opens. No, I'm sorry, that's wrong. This is where it opens. Look at where the stock opens here. Look at the previous day's close here. Now go halfway. 50%. Look at that. Right at the 50% level, green takes out red. Boom! Green takes out red. Come from way over here. Boom! Away from your moving average, you're taking profits. Green takes out red near the 20 period moving average again. Boom! This is not rocket science, this game. There are far too many of you overcomplicating this game. You've got that adult mentality instead of the 12-year-old mentality. There's two bars, green ones and red bars. There's two moving averages, 20 period moving average, 200. There's two positions above those moving averages, below those moving averages. There are two trends, uptrend, downtrend. There are two actions, buy, sell. There are two results, win, loss. Get these twos correct, traders. And oh my God, what a career you have in this business. Most people are out there fooling around trying to figure this stuff out on their own and that's the hardest way possible guys fill this gap in you know what to do fill that bad boy in fill it in you're now below the moving averages fill it in fill that gap in now look at that 50 percent mark <sighs> i love this game and i love this game i love it you know what to do now you know what to do